At the start of 2022, cold was barely known. Maybe if you don't follow any Easter lore, you might not even know who cold is. So it came as a shock when Scented, one of the greatest on the region, decided to duo with him. But Scented swore he was cracked. And despite initial doubts, he proved himself. So when Scented picked up Cold, I was so incredibly excited for him. And I knew he was going to pop off. Cold was going crazy. Again, again, and again at Fortnite's biggest land since the World Cup. Like spy and focus here, looking to fight back a huge 100. Cold puts down focus though in a great fight. And Cold is 1v2ing here as he only has a little bit of loot set to find something in the distance, comes back to support. And he's here. And they turn it around. And just like that, Cold was one of the top players in the world at the end of 2022. A huge blow up. But he was missing an FNCS championship. So he looked at Major 1 as a canvas to paint his masterpiece. I really only want to win a championship. But he had a problem. He needed a duo as Scented had announced his retirement to start off the year. Let's talk about the big news that broke yesterday that Scented is quitting Fortnite. While Scented's retirement would prove temporary, Cold would join this new duo and not look back. He teamed up with one of North America's greatest IGLs, Acorn. Acorn is going to be playing with Cold. And if you like these videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. Less than 5% of viewers are subscribed. Who had won in FNCS to start 2021 in Chapter 2, Season 5. That's right! It's Ooh. Lex! It's Acorn! It's Jock! And had consistently remained at the top of the region, but a second championship was proving elusive. Everyone questioning when Scented came back, why did Cold stick with Acorn? So he and Cold would come together at the start of chapter four, season one, and they would be a great fit immediately, winning the week four Elite Cup with an insane solo clutch from Cold, something we will see a lot more of. Two duos, one duo, one duo, only one duo. Not, might not be height, you're the best player. Yes, Shieldfish. Give Shieldfish when you can. You're the best player in the world. Take your time. You haven't boxed, you haven't boxed, he has no match. Let's go! And the week six Elite Cup a few days before Grand Finals. So what was the backdrop going into Grands? Fortnite Competitive was coming off a major tailwind from the FNCS Global Invitational. To the wall. Shot's gonna be fired! At the end of the event, Epic Games announced the end of Chapter 3, and then they would unveil a new FNCS format, three majors culminating in an international LAN, the Global Championship. Battle your way in the majors to earn your spot in the FNCS Global Championship. And on North America East, there would be one spot up for grabs and a share of close to $500,000. Along with a new map, Chapter 4 introduced a new core mechanic. There are some of these that are absolutely unbelievably broken, like being able to always see where the next zone is. Reality augments. As well as a completely new loot pool. Now, the Shockwave Hammer. With the season's mobility item being the Shockwave Hammer, which the community was split on. I also just don't like exactly how the weapon works when it comes to the slam, but I do actually like the way it works for rotation. And finally, before Grand Finals, Epic Games made a shocking announcement. All tournaments are going to be hosted on NA Central from next season onwards. Starting in Season 2, the North America East region and the North America West region would be combined, creating North America Central. Meaning after 16 FNCSs, this would be the last for North America East. I mean, it's the end of an era! I know! So, for all the great duos, there is a lot on the line. Outside of Acorn and Cold, there were other big duo shakeups to start the year. Buga and Miro, after a 3 beat and multiple top 3 finishes, separated after a disappointing 36th at the Global Invitational. Miro would team up with Edgy, and Buga with Peterbot. But there were plenty more duos that would all make noise. Clicks and Dukes would split, leaving Dukes to play with recently unretired Scented, and Clicks with Donnie. Up and coming teams like Bryce and Chubbs, Ryze and Yamzo played their first FNCS together, and as we know, they would go on to dominate Central. And finally, Kanata and Agers were staying together and looking to win their first FNCS. So let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Straight to game two, where Agers and Kanata make a crazy escape from a tough situation. At least cloud his position, but a flank, a huge flank. Agers, Kanata trying to survive. Agers gets himself out. Kanata soon to follow. They have just escaped a nightmare right before our very eyes. A rare double controller duo, revised and reciprocal, have height 
as Kanata and Adrius make plays. Powerhouse duo Kanata and Adrius trying to do the same, and they find Mason slipping. Huge elimination and refresh to keep themselves alive. And in the chaos, go down. Drop down to reality as they try to hold it, and Kanata is down. As Bryce and Chubbs close out the game. We won now. Bryce wants to finish it, and Chubbs looking for it, and a player goes in the air to Veeam to finish it off as Chubbs walks away. In endgame, Acorn and Cold are cooking on low ground. It's only a matter of time for Reciprocal and Revise to find the success they're looking for as Acorn and Cold, they're not after that high ground, they're after the low ground. As Revised is cooking in his second straight endgame. Dual form as he now goes down as well. Revised though, on the high ground, loses his teammate again. Despite them having height uh, several times, Reciprocal or Revised continues to lose a teammate in these high pressure situations. They need to stay calm as now they've taken Acorn out. Miro takes out Qua and needs to win a 1v1. Drop down to 50 HP, drop down to the lobby all together. Miro is one of the last players alive, 1v1 against Revised. But loses on the reload. Even in the game, but the challenge comes out. The battle is inevitable, shockwaving up. Miro wants to end this right here, right now. Two great shots, he has to reload, and it cost him everything. Revised steals it away. And after three games, two controller players against all odds are in first. Straight to end game where Kanata is making plays as a solo. I don't know what will, letting him know I am still the player that you guys saw win that World Cup championship as Kanata's trying to be that devastating player to the lobby as well. So is Cold. He can get themselves back in and give them a second chance at life, just like Cold is trying to do the same thing. He lost Acorn just seconds ago. They have four eliminations, 180 points. Fuga is hanging on as a solo in his first strong game of the tournament. Okus beams from height before going down in the end game. Ground, Rokane's floating slowly but surely behind. Shockwave Hammer tries to contest. That's four more points for Okus and a second place guaranteed as Jackson and the Roller get the elimination, the victory royale. And after game four, the leaderboard is starting to take shape. Into Endgame, where Kanata is cooking but gets taken out. To get themselves a top spot on the leaderboard, they box up a player. That's going to be Duke who goes down all together. But Kanata, the trade is there. He is under siege. He gets dropped as well. As Cold and Acorn hold height as they push for the lead. Donnie and Clix are playing well in their first clean Endgame. Clix hangs on before being taken out by Colt, who has nine eliminations. Going for the peace control, causing everything <laughs> to come crumbling down for Clix and Colt. And he and Acorn close out the game with 15 total eliminations, breaking the FNCS single game point record of 125 points. Very many builds left. Shockwave Hammer trying to bring this game to a close. Colt takes about 75 damage out of zone, in zone. He's trying to do all he can. Now it's Acorn's <laughs> turn to finish the job. 15 eliminations. This team is looking to take the FNCS by storm and take first. Trashy takes out Acorn who was a solo. Huge amount of damage chunked off. Trashy the same. Living with just 52 HP box to box trying to get the peace control to go through but that's Acorn who's living to tell the tale. Big push bomb coming down. That is one way to save the day but it only buys him a couple of seconds at that. Cannot and Agers take out a duo. He's positioned at. Doesn't want to get high ground snuck away from him at the last moment as Kanata finds Bizzle slipping. Along with Blake, that's a full duo out and gone. And Kanata keeps cooking on low. Right there, looming close by Kanata. Another huge knock there onto Bryce and the refresh he's going to need. Before going down. He still finds himself outside of Storm and it is all over in game number six for him. As Macwood and Threats close out the game from height. It's only a matter of time. Threats dropping down low. He wants to finish the job, but it's Macwood who seals the deal. And after day one, Agers and Kanata jump to second as Acorn and Cold hold first. Cold goes down early, and Acorn is left as a solo. Focus have one really, really good game, but it could all change here. But another team that's changing for is Acorn and Cold. They need one shot. One shot is all it takes to keep Cold in it, and unfortunately not going to find it. But gets taken out. A big bush bomb can't save you in a situation like this, especially if you take a big tag like that. Down goes first place. Leaving the door open for Kanata, who is trying to solo clutch. Left by himself, 15 splashes. He can stagger himself back, but does he have the opportunity? Does he have the time? He needs to find a moment to stabilize himself. And oh my gosh, a huge shot. As Trashy makes an epic 
1v2. And not overextend in a fight like this, especially with no builds left. He gets the knock. Will he be able to hold him down? He gets two. He gets two eliminations to finish off that duo. And Byla and Enpen close out the game. Enpen and Chess, the only duo standing, but Aoxy, he has the world on his shoulders, and it's not going to be enough, though, as Enpen and Chess Juniors with 11 eliminations. And the leaderboard has an incredible shakeup. Game 8 would be a transformational game for the tournament and one of its most memorable. Kanata would go down in the midst of a solo clutch. That's what's going to happen here. But Danger Hero popping off here. He's going to get a little bit of help, but it's not going to be enough. As Acorn and Cold cook in Endgame. They had a little bit of a blunder. Just that final game of <laughs> yesterday to start the game today. Quanti gets caught slipping. Peter Bach goes down, trying to make an insane solo height play against Diamzo and Rise. Key for him to take out high ground and focus them. But sure enough, it does end up working in his favor, causing Yamzo a little bit of damage, but it's not going to be a good exchange. As Cold keeps cooking. Landing just a short shot on Diamzo. Acorn ends up in the wrong box. He's under pressure, but he's going to be able to survive. Cold making sure that these clutch plays he's known for is going to follow him to the FNCS final. And with Acorn down, executes a gorgeous solo clutch to win. Probably the finest moment of his career. Five, six, seven, eight eliminations as they hold on to the final moments. Cold going to challenge fast there on height. Then go for the low ground, takes out Jackson, and now it's a 1v1. Ice in his veins, he called Cold for a reason. A huge shot on the match, back to back. 10 eliminations. This man wants the title. He wants to go to the FNCS Global Championship. Regaining the lead. At the start of the game, Pump and Trashy are in trouble in an early game fight, but pull through. Bobby is going to get it to bypass us up the leaderboard. And you can see Trashy and Pump going against Tasker and Clarity. And oh my, Pump with a huge shot. And Acorn and Cold go down to Surge early, putting their lead at risk. In game after game up until this point, just 14 below. And he's continuously falling and he doesn't get it off in time. In endgame, Kanata and Agers push hard, but go down, not fully capitalizing on their opportunity. So other teams in the top 10 would like to capitalize, like Yamzo, who's cooking as a solo. Yamzo used the big bush bomb as a distraction. No mask to his name. A siphon has to come through. That's his chance. He's going to be able to get it. Can he get out as Jackson gets dropped, getting tagged up from the sky, goes forward in the zone just a little too far. And Quan Jack close out Doug and accept for the win. Except Dubs sent into the storm. Qua looking to connect the shot. They're exchanging quick. Dubs goes down. It's all up to Jack. Will he be able to take on the fight there with Except? Despite his teammates still being in it, this, every shot's gonna count here. Will he clean it up? And he does. Kanata goes down as a solo, trying to get just a few points on the board to close the gap with Acorn and Cole. And keeping him alive further and further into this game, but now he's challenging the solo player in the box. But this is a big challenge if he loses this, and he does. Rise, whose duo is making a surge on day two, makes a nifty play on Nadi. For them yeah, and their lead. Listen, you speak his greatness and you see him up there on the high ground. Booga getting an elimination there. Acorn goes down, leaving Cold to solo clutch. Momentarily, do they have enough to hold on? But down goes Acorn. Who gets an elimination? Because when they have height, they know how to control it. There he goes, finds one. Before trying to 1v2 Booga and Peterbot. He's gonna be right above. He's gonna go ahead and bypass it, landing a good shot on the Peterbot back to back as he gets the knock on the Booga as well. Everything, everything comes crashing down. He almost makes magic happen once more. As Yamzo takes height and cooks. The high ground, he gets knocked. Yamzo set that mine, snatches it away, sends him down to the low. And he's gonna follow up. Another shot. Danger Hero trying to keep Joji alive, but it's not enough for the likes of Yamzo. And he and Ryze close out the game. Well, Yamzo and Ryze clean it up on the high ground. He's looking to connect the shots onto this player. So unsuspecting, but Ryze almost going down, still clutches it up. And take a three-point lead over Acorn and Cold. So, this was really heating up going into the final two games. Straight to end game where Peterbot is cooking. Do we have enough build? Can we outlast? Booga gets caught out. Peterbot trying to find some redemption. A huge shot onto Miro, but he's barely gonna be able to escape for now. But now Peterbot. And the excitement meters turned all the way up to 10 as Rise is a solo and Acorn and Cold are below surge. Rise goes down, but Cold again as a solo is cooking. Roll the pressure on his shoulders and using the last of his heals. It's only him that makes the job done. I called him a magician before and magic happens again. 
huge elimination there onto Dubs. As Kanata and Agers look to shoot up the leaderboard, but Kanata goes down, leaving Agers to try and resurrect him. Soon, they're going to try and take oh. it as they can, especially with players like this. Agers losing Kanata. Where is he? Where's the llama at? I don't know where Cole is going to be able to dig deep how many times as cold keeps pushing as a solo and cold keeps going somehow unleashing another iconic clutch this is it here can cold hold on he gets oh an my. elimination or a knock onto kanada but Ager still in this game. He's looking to convert, and he does. A full elimination comes through. Cold now fights Ager's here. For it all, it's actually death on the other side of this. Another one coming through here for Cold. Can he be stopped? Another one. That's going to be the name of the game. DJ Cold does enough, but it's not enough to topple over N Pen and Chess Genius. And leaving them with a lead going into the final game. First and second are a box to box going into Endgame and Acorn and Cold encounter Rise again. He holding the high ground, huge play for them, but Acorn and Cold now in the box of another player, but could be the refresh is Rise. Two, big shot onto Rise, almost finishing it off. As Acorn goes down and Cold gets an elimination and revives him. Can he clutch it up? Acorn and Cold are on shambles as well. Acorn goes down altogether, but somehow the Cold does it again. Two more eliminations added to his total and a chance to get the res off onto Acorn. But they get flanked and Cold escapes. And fighting tooth and nail to keep their own game intact. What just no. happened? Acorn is down. Cold only has 63 HP. He needs to move away now as a solo player. As Rise goes down, which clinched the tournament for Acorn and Cold. After game, moment after moment, always the bridesmaid, never the bride when it comes to second place. Now he's going toe to toe, and he does it. Cold and Acorn are your FNCS Major One champions. In third place, Kanata and Agers fight for high ground. They say you're not going to steal the show. We might not come out on top, but we want to be the team they talk about. Down goes Kanata, up goes Agers. 2v1 yet again. What are we witnessing coming down to the wire? Agers solo clutches yeah but how much longer can he hold on what an elimination onto pump he can only hold on for so much more as walkers and vert close him out vert and walkers in a 2v1 versus agers here this is all for bragging rights here for the final game we know who won but who's going to be rewarded with the last victory round fncs and east and it's going to be walkers it's going to be vert and it's the slam dunk taking down agers but acorn and cold win becoming the last ever North American East champions and book their ticket to Copenhagen. We have been high lighting cold as a solo player, <laughs> putting Acorn on his back, and now they can hold the axe of champions high as your NA East major one champions. With Kanata and Agers jumping to second, each of their best placement up to that point, previewing their success just a few seasons later, with Rise and Yamzo falling to third. Buga and Peterbot were a disappointing 16th, Klix and Dani in 29th. The Italian political philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli said, whosoever desires constant success must change his conduct with the times. And aren't we glad Acorn and Cold took that to heart and created a super duo. Like, sub, and check out our other videos.